Hey, I'm Jeff and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you some of the largest houseplants that I have in my collection. Now I probably won't be able to bring all of them onto the table here just because they are too large, but I will do my best. But otherwise, let's check it out. So the first plant I'm going to start off with is the Philodendron Amame. It just so happens to be on my plant table right here. And these leaves are absolutely massive. Now the funny thing about this plant there's a couple things, is I almost threw this plant out um, about a year ago. It really wasn't uh, developing into anything substantial. The leaves, every time they unfurled, they would always be damaged and it looks like, or it did look like trash all the time. Um, I'm glad I kept it. I actually have two of them and the other one is down on my floor over here. It's in a crawling pot. Uh, the other kind of comical thing about this plant is that it has a, an extremely small pot considering the size of the leaves. Like these are absolutely massive. Otherwise this thing is looking beautiful and I do have to uh, give it a new pot here sometime soon. Um, yeah, I can't believe how large this plant has uh, gotten. Um, in regards to the leaf size, like it's definitely larger than my hand. Okay, now some of these are extremely challenging to get out of their area just because of how large they are. And that is the case for this one. Oh, this is my Anthurium. I don't even know if I can get it in frame. Anthurium brownii. This thing is an absolute beast. I'm just gonna keep it on the floor right here. Look at this thing. Here's the newest leaf. It's absolutely massive. It's still sizing up, so I don't want to touch it too much because I don't want there to be any physical damage on the leaf. Now, if you're looking to get into anthuriums, this is one that causes me no issues at all. It's in an extremely small pot, so I definitely need to repot this one as well but I've never had a single issue with this one. I let it get pretty much bone dry and you can see the leaves. They're all like beautiful. There's no yellowing. They don't get droopy. It's just a super easy going plant. And yeah, other than giving it some water and fertilizer, I'll take it over to my uh, shower over here. I'll spray it off, make sure there's no um, dirty leaves or pests or that sort of thing. But um, yeah, this is one of my favorite plants. And it just so happens to be that I actually won this plant. It was part of an Instagram contest. I think there was like uh, about maybe five different plants in this kind of grand prize package and this was one of them. And this is the back side of my plant workshop table and this is where the plant is now. And it just kind of fills in this bare area. So I'm just gonna move this guy back. Oh, like that. And it just fills in the bottom. For these next two plants, I did remove my grow light that is hanging on the underside of my plant shelf there. I just put it off to the side over here. Um, this Monstera, I am not going to attempt to remove. I do take it out every once in a while to um, spread off with a uh, garden hose, just make sure the leaves are clean, but I would have to remove all of these plants in order to get this um, uh, big monster out. And last time I did, I'd actually knocked over a couple plants on the <laughs> plant shelf up here. So uh, I'm gonna do my best to show you the monstera and then I'm going to talk about this splendid here as well. So I've had this monstera for a few years now and it's finally getting the uh, secondary uh, perforations here as well. Um, last time when I took it outside, the uh, wind uh, basically knocked the plant over and it ripped the leaf, but uh, there is just a little bit of damage there. But uh, for the most part, the rest of the plant is undamaged. But look at these leaves, massive. And these lower ones, um, yeah, they do get a little bit yellow, so have to keep an eye on uh, watering. But I am air layering this plant. I'm just gonna try and get down here into the jungle. Um, this is a bag with sphagnum moss and it is damp right now so you can see all of these nice roots as I'm going to uh, basically chop this plant up and uh, put it in its own separate pot. So I'll probably cut somewhere along here and then all of these roots will be in the soil. So that is um, a video for down the road but this thing is huge. Okay, and the next plant is this beautiful Philodendron Splendid. This one is a little bit difficult to get out as well, but I'm going to do my best. I'm just going to remove it. I kind of tip it. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. That's the Majestic. This guy. Just kind of tip it down. I don't want to touch the new growth point at the top. Here is the last leaf. 
Um, yeah, it's beautiful. This one is pretty well a low maintenance plant as well. It always looks good. I just water when the moss pole is dry. And again, it's in a fairly small pot. I did have to upsize it. I'm gonna see if I can bring it up here without falling off my little stool. You can see how much it sizes up. Oh, I got a little puddle of water on the floor. I can't even get it to the ceiling without hitting it here and then showing you the pot. It's a fairly small pot, but you can see just how small these original leaves were and how large it gets. Okay, I don't want to drop it. It is on its one, two, three, fourth uh, thickly moss pole extension and it does extremely well on this, uh, this setup. So if you're looking for a fairly low maintenance philodendron that gets these big, beautiful leaves, then definitely try and get your hands on a philodendron splendid. It is a combination of the Melanochrysum and the Varicosum. It actually has a pretty cool petiol here as well. It's uh, kind of like a purple kind of burgundy. And then it has um, kind of like a little green fuzzy stripes on it. This next one is basically a two for one. I have two different types of plants in this uh, longer kind of rectangular pot. These are both crawling philodendrons. This one right here, this is the newest leaf. This is my uh, philodendron SP Columbia or silver. I think it's uh, often referred to. And then I do have the other uh, philodendron mame in this one here as well. So um, yeah, it's been doing really well in this uh, longer kind of self-watering rectangle, uh, rectangle pot. And this leaf just emerged the other day and it's still uh, sizing up and hardening off. But um, this thing is beautiful. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about this one other than it gets uh, spider mites quite frequently. So this is another one that I have to spray off uh, quite regularly with, um, I use pure crop one just as kind of a preventative. I don't want to touch this leaf because it's still sizing up. So this is not the final uh, size of this leaf, but what a beautiful, beautiful plant. And this one has some nice uh, kind of red edging along the leaf. It's another plant with a beautiful petiole and the stem itself is, is thickening up as well. So it's quite a beefy petiole on this one. I started each plant at the end, like opposite to each other. And then as they continue to grow, they uh, will, my thought was they would pass each other and then it would be a nice full pot, but it looks like they are now colliding, bumping into each other. But <laughs> otherwise, um, if I put both plants on one side of the pot, this uh, side would be bare. So that was kind of my rationale with the thinking of, of how to set this plant up. But overall, everything on this channel is just trial and error and I'm happy with the progress of this plant so far. This next one is the Philodendron Maximum and although it's probably one of the smaller plants that will be in this video today, I chose this because if you do a quick Google search of this plant, you'll quickly see that this plant gets absolutely massive. I think there's one picture where there's uh, just one leaf is the size of an adult human. It's absolutely insane. Uh, so this one has quickly sized up. You can see from some of the smaller original leaves, um, just how quickly this, uh, this leaf uh, or this leaf sizes up. Same with the stem here as well. It goes from a fairly thin uh, stem with kind of spaced out internodes to something a bit more chunky uh, with some very tight internodes at the top here. It's absolutely loving this moss pool. There's a ton of roots at the back. Uh, but hopefully I don't get uh, a leaf like the size of a, of a human being downstairs here in my, in my basement, but I love the, the leaf texture. It's kind of a, it almost feels like a plasticky leaf and then just the very dark green um, leaf color to it. It's an absolutely beautiful plant, but um, yeah, it's got a very thick petiole and I have a feeling this plant is gonna get very, very large. I have two plants left and the next one is actually right here. I just took it over and gave it some water. This is the Anthurium crystallinum and it has two large leaves and then it has an inflorescence as well. So it's just starting to flower. So this thing is massive. Um, yeah, I just took this over, sprayed off the leaves, making sure that they're clean of any dust or even pests. Basically just blast it off and then I soak the soil. So this one, it really didn't do anything for the longest time. And then all of a sudden it put out this uh, big giant leaf. Here is the uh, latest one, uh, but this is a beautiful plant. And again, I just fertilize with uh, Dynagrow Foliage Pro. 
basically it, uh, it just receives light from all of my grow lights from um, Soltech. I have some Sansi grow lights and Burena. Um, but yeah, this is a big leaf. It's the size of my head for sure. Um, and this is a pretty easy going one as well. Um, yeah, other than just a little bit of kind of physical damage at the bottom here, this uh, leaf is, is, is beautiful. It's uh, big and beautiful. So here's my little workshop studio. So I got my computer where I do all my editing and I have the crystal liner right there. But every time I pass uh, this spot right here to get to my chair, I always smack my face on the inflorescence. So yeah, I'm hoping to find another anthurium that I can uh, pollinate uh, with when this one is ready and then I can get some berries on this one and make some more anthuriums. And the last one is a, oh, I just hit myself in the face with that flower. Uh, the last one is a pretty common one. This is the Alocasia Regal Shield. I got this one from Home Depot. I just have it in a small little nursery pot and then I have it in this larger one, but I'm just gonna put this to the side. Um, if you're looking for an easy going Alocasia, this one uh, gets very, very large. It's a beautiful dark green and then it has kind of a maroon um, underside with almost like a neon green uh, veining on the uh, underside of the leaves. If you're looking for an alocasia that is uh, extremely easy going and it always pushes out new growth then this is definitely one that I would recommend for just regular house conditions. You don't need any, you can't even see me, you don't even need like uh, really high humidity or anything like that. Um, there that's better. I think you can see a little bit better but um, large leaves, it gives you tons of new growth. If I took this out right now, just in this pot, I'd probably find like, I'm guessing 20 corms uh, where you can propagate. So beautiful, beautiful plant. And this one, like I said, uh, I picked up at Home Depot, I think for like 20 bucks. You can usually find them at uh, most garden centers, big box stores kind of throughout the, uh, the summer. So um, it's got a nice, big, thick, chunky stem. And it does have a little, um, I can't remember what they're called. It's not a, a corn, but it has like a little, it's almost like a little tuber. It's actually got a couple. Oh, well, that's just a, well, there's a corn right there. Um, I'm just gonna leave that one. Um, yeah, it's got a little growth point just kind of popping through there. It's always sprouting out new leaves. Um, this one really hasn't given me too, uh, too many issues with pests, even though I can see maybe a little bit of physical damage on the underside of the leaves here. Um, looks like thrip damage, but I'm not really seeing any thrips on this plant. And uh, this is another one that I uh, spray off quite frequently. Um, but otherwise, I've never really had too many pest issues, but it seems to be that thrips are kind of going through my collection again. It's not a, a, a terrible um, issue right now, but um, the odd time I will find a thrip or two, but look at this big, beautiful leaves. So, this basement is, is kind of getting out of hand. Um, it's looking like a literal jungle, uh, just huge massive leaves. And I don't really have like crazy humidity or anything like that. But I just thought I would show some of my larger leafed uh, plants that I have in my collection. I know I always appreciate when people put out these types of videos. I love uh, seeing the potential that uh, like a small plant can get to over time uh, and with proper care. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please uh, leave it down below in the comment section. I do have many other large plants that didn't make this video. Um, I just wanted to kind of keep it uh, relatively short and sweet, I guess. But otherwise, thanks for watching all my videos. Take care, everyone. Bye.